Welcome to the second module of this Monster Crop Production Standard training. Principle 1, assess and manage environmental, social and human rights risks. So this is the second module of seven modules. The first on the introduction on bone sucre production standard and the other ones on the principles of the bone sucre production standard. Now we will see the structure of, of the training material. Here in this slide we will have the information from the bone sucre production standard. So outside the criterion, of course, here the indicator and the indicator description. Here the scope, yes, mill agriculture or if it's the whole supply area. Here the core indicator, or if we don't have that, is because this is not a core indicator, so to identify it. Now we have the standard and the metric indicator here. And of course, in this place, you can see the description of the full indicator requirements, exactly as it is on the Monsucro production standard. Here, on this slide, we have a summary of the implementation guidance. So the scope as defined in the guidance, the objective as defined in the guidance, and here uh, a guidance description summary uh, for this for this implementation uh, guidance. Some slides or some indicators need uh, context concepts. So context concepts to better understand, to better understand uh, some some points uh, or some concepts like maybe uh, living ways, social dialogue, uh, risk assessment. So we have some uh, slides on, on in this place. Some of some of the indicators not need that uh, concept context concepts. Others will need. And at the end we have the indicator auditing guidance. Uh, this is a summary of the auditing guidance. So we will have first uh, the bone sucre production standard. Second, the implementation guidance to understand how to implement uh, some concepts in the middle. And third, the auditor guidance, how to audit, how to audit this indicator. This is the end of the, of the structure for each indicator on the training material. From this moment, the camera will be closed. Please enjoy the training. Thank you so much. Welcome to principle one, assess and manage environmental, social and human rights risks. This principle is made by four criteria. Uh, criteria 1.1, leadership demonstrated through elaboration and implementation of sustainability policies. This is what we will see first. 1.2, risks and impacts are systematically assessed. 1.3, the implementation of the sustainability system is systematically and risk-based. 1.4, system for monitoring and evaluation, m and &E, and grievance are implemented. As we can see, this principle gives a tool for continuous improvement on the operation. So the first indicator of this criteria is 1.1.1 and the only indicator the operator develops and implements sustainability policies this is a core indicator uh, of course in the scope for meal and agriculture and the standard is yes of course uh, uh, to validate that they exist uh, in line with the scope of the standard the world's co-production standard the policies in place need to respect the human rights aligned with UNGP indigenous people's rights commit community engagement and land rights, labor rights, occupational health and safety, environmental protection, non-conversion of HCVs, anti-corruption, anti-bribery, money laundering, et and ethical conduct, of course, as a minimum, and other policies can be included. These policies shall be seen by senior management, manager, management. The operator's commitment is made available to personnel and to all the stakeholders. And of course, uh, uh, it's a it's a statement that needs to be uh, involved in ongoing due diligence of actual and potential impacts. From the implementation point of view, uh, these indicators aim, aim to ensure that the operation defines their stability goals, criteria and objective, that the plan is right now. 
This policy is called outlined in the structure with objective, scope, terms and definition, commitments to be accomplished, regulation, and the periodicity, this will be revised and updated. The top management should be involved. They to engage, to, to have leadership, to be accountable, to commit with these policies and to commit in the constructions, of course, and to, to, to be clear and to make, to have some structure on these policies, we need to include some documents, important documents like ILO documents, uh, general policy on health and safety, or ECD documents, and the information on the Bolsonaro production standards for principle three and four. This is the plan. This is the plan for the implementation in the future. Management leadership in this process is very important. They need to be involved, of course, in the promotion, communication, and monitor of the performance of the policies. That will be adapted to the size of the complexity and the complexity of the of the and the culture of the company and of course the context of the implementation of the consumer production standard um, the, the, the management need to be involved of course in the constructions and it will be sure that in the engagement of the workers and the stakeholders in this policy this is an important part of the uh, procedure of implement, implementation of these policies as said before the construction of the policies need to be done by the company. It's a, it's a process that needs to be uh, engaged by all the uh, workers in the company involved in these uh, policies, in these aspects of different policies. Uh, they need to be focused on the real issues in the company and need to be adapted and updated when needed. So the construction is a very important part uh, of of the planning of the policies and after and further in the implementation of the policies. Finally, from the auditing point of view, there need to be evidence of knowledge of this policy from the operators and from the uh, top management. They need to be documented, evidence of the documentation of these policies. They need to be clear how these policies have been developed. Of course, stakeholders and the auditors need to access to the policies. If they are not in the, the website, auditors need to understand how this policy has been shared with stakeholders. They need to demonstrate understanding of the policies, not only the company and the top management, but also the stakeholders. And there needs to be a plan to update the policies, to be clear when and how to update these policies. The second criterion of this principle is risk and impacts are systematically assessed. The first indicator of this criteria is the operator conducts mapping of internal, external, and vulnerable stakeholders. This is also a core indicator for meal and agriculture. The standard is yes, and the idea behind it is to have an identification prioritization and engagement plan with interested and affected parties. So it's not only to have a list, but it's also to have a plan that shall have achievable actions and objectives, monitoring activities, agreed responsibilities, time frames, and allocated resources. Of course, this reflects the continuous improvement and organization learning principles, and is released every three years or sooner as per company procedures or as needed, of course. Um, this is a plan uh, to engage with the stakeholders and to go further to have more information than only a list of address of each stakeholder. So from the point of view of the implementation guidance, it's important to be clear that the operator maps and understands the needs and expectation of key stakeholders and foster tools amongst stakeholders. To include, of course, or the input of this mapping, uh, the needs and expectation of workers and other parties uh, that comes from communication, the identification of vulnerable groups, the FPIC include also if, if done or if required, uh, and not be, not, not be limited to general stakeholders. The engagement plans, the different group of workers, of course, of the inputs needed to, to construct the, this mapping. That should include, of course, the planning of scope, the periodicity of activities, identification of impact stakeholders and issues of interest, uh, all the information um, that need to be included on this plan of engagement with stakeholders. To prioritize this 
stakeholders. We need to include, of course, the area of influence, the unit of certification, the engagement plan, and all the information to, to identify uh, which stakeholders is uh, more important, less important, which stakeholders is a priority for the organization. This is the, the, the key point of the engagement plan that we are looking for in this indicator. From the point of view of auditing of this indicator, there need to be a plan to identify stakeholders. So the auditor needs to, to, to understand how this plan works uh, and how they identify, of course, that internal external stakeholders. How they justify, of course, uh, this identification, how they identify that, that this prioritization, of course. Evidence of implementation and communication, determine, determine where and how to participate and the knowledge, knowledge about the engagement plan. Uh, what is the knowledge, the interviews undertaken, uh, and how does how this engagement plan works? The second indicator of this criterion is indicator 1.2.2 and says that the operator conducts a risk analysis on compliance against the Bunsuku production standard. This indicator will be apply, applicable sorry, for the meal and agriculture, and it is a non-core indicator. The standard required is yes, and these indicators require that the operator conducts a risk analysis on compliance against the indicators of the uh, Bonsu Group Production Standard, and this analysis shall be revised at least every three years or more uh, regularly as per company process and activities. From the point of view of the implementation, uh, the idea is to manage risk of failing out of compliance against the Bonsuko production standard. So to determine and understand the probability and negative impact, effective controls according to the URC of controls, source situational risk, reorganization of change in process knowledge and potential emergency is an overview of that risk of the compound. Of course, determining the context, relevant issues, the outcomes, monitoring and management, measurable objectives and actions to mitigate, mitigate the identified impacts and to manage or enhance the natural resources. And at least, of course, to implement operational controls, to review operational controls, evaluate new challenges in the operation, establish and implement operational controls, and include a mechanism to continuously identify impacts. So the, the, the importance of the implementation guidance is to analyze the risk, to understand that risk, and to have an impact as a result of all the company and all the operation on the unit of certification. That will help to, to, continue, to, to understand that continuous improvement and to identify that maybe weakness and maybe positive uh, uh, part of the operation. So now the question is, what is a good risk assessment and what is not a good risk assessment? First step to define the scope of the operation. So the organization should determine its boundaries and applicability of the management system using the outputs from the context analysis and the stakeholder identification and considering its activities and the geographical, physical and organizational boundaries in order to clarify what is and what is not within the scope of its management system. In this process, it's important for the credibility of the management system that the scope is not defined in a way that excludes activities or facilities that have or can have significant impact on the sustainability performance. And should understand, of course, the extent of control or influence that it can do over activities, products, and services before deciding on the scope. The way that outsourced functions and processes should are also in scope of the management system, even though the organization that performs their activities are not within the scope, could impact the intended outcomes of the management system. So to define what's the scope, what was the unit of certification and what are the impacts of this unit of certification in this case. Second point to identificate hazards. Hazards have the potential to cause prejudice to human or the environment. As hazards therefore need to be identified before the risk associated with them can be assessed. Hazard identification refer refers to how organization activities are done 
and it is expected that proactively determine all sources, situation, task, and possible combination of these arising from organizational activities that have the potential to harm in terms of human injury or ill health or environmental impacts or sustainability in general. So also include issues that could arise from reorganization or changing process, changing knowledge and potential emergency situation and consider past incidents and experience of other organizations with similar processes. So what are the hazards? Uh, uh, what can happen? From the point of view of sustainability uh, in, in, this, in, in this case. Once the scope and the hazards are identified, we can proceed to, to, to understand what the risk assessment. So the severity of situations, the probability to exposure, for example, uh, social explosion, uh, strikes from the community, uh, environmental impacts, flooding, for example, biodiversity uh, 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 losses of species, uh, etc. So what are the risks from the point of view of sustainability? What I identified can be the risk of the operation, of course, and how to manage this risk will be also, and of course, the objective of the implementation of the Bonsuco production standard. So if we can understand at this moment, we have the policies, we have the identification of stakeholders, and now we have that risk assessments that allow us to understand uh, and to prevent what are the potential risks in the operation. From the auditing point of view, uh, of course, this risk analysis need to be documented. This is the first step from the auditor. Uh, company need to provide evidence on how they uh, identify the risk. Uh, need to have some indicators for the assessment, identify compliance with the standard in the future, review the documented evidence uh, of this assessment, identification and involvement of potential affected recourse on whether conflict, political instability, infrastructure gaps, social unrest, etc., can uh, be part of this risk uh, of the operation from the point of view of sustainability. So the auditor need to be to understand the risk analysis, to understand how they conduct the risk analysis, and of course, that will need to understand how the company identified the risk. This is important from the auditing point of view. The tier indicator of this criterion uh, is the operator conducts and documents an improvement opportunity assessment outside the unit of certification. This is a core indicator. And now the scope is the area outside the unit of certification. This is one of the two indicators where, where the Bonsuco production standard asks for the for the operators to see some risk outside the unit of certification. So conduct and document an assessment that identifies opportunities to address adverse social and environmental conditions as framed by core indicators from two to four. So only these indicators on risk on principle two, three, and four of the Bonsurco production standard. That, that assessment, of course, uh, shall be revised at least every three years uh, to be sure that this is updated. So from the implementation point of view, the, the idea is to, in the same logic that the risk assessment for the unit of certification to understand and to make a risk assessment for these um, suppliers outside the unit of certification. So, of course, to be clear, uh, what is the context? What are the outcomes? What are the risks on these two to four principles? In, in the outside unit of certification. To be clear that the auditor doesn't need to go in the supply base outside the unit of certification. The idea is to, from the auditor, to understand the report that you conduct, how you conduct the report, when you conduct the report, uh, who conduct the report, to be clear what's the results and how to manage that information. So what to do? To character, characterize, characterize the supply base, size, geolocation, geolocation number of growers, etc. To identify potential risks from principles two to four. 
to rely on technical assistance team to carry out this assessment. So uh, it's, the, it's the best way to for the technical assistance team to do this. What, what not to do? This is not an internal audit of the supply base. Suppliers are not expected to be in full compliance with the standard. And the auditor will assess your risk assessment, not the compliance of the suppliers outside the unit of certification. That to be clear. So it's not a compliance outside the unit of certification, it's an identification of risk of this uh, indicator from two to from principles two to four. So from the auditing point of view, of course, this assessment needs to be documented. Uh, the auditor needs to understand who they are, where they are, uh, how they work, to, to be clear uh, how this assessment is constructed. Who constructs the assessment? What is the baseline, of course? The documented list of opportunities and risk, of course. And to be clear, and maybe needed an FPIC, but it's not a thing that needs to be audited. The FPIC outside the unit of certification is not part of the audit. It may be part of the assessment needed to control that risk. 1.2.4 is the second indicator with the scope of the area outside of the unit of certification. The operator develops and implements a continuous improvement plan to address the salient opportunities identified outside the unit of certification. So it's linked with the previous indicator. And the idea is based on, on this indicator to, to, to construct a, this continuous improvement plan. It shall be progressive and appropriate to the size, sector, operational context, ownership, and structure of the operator, with achievable action of the objective, agreed responsibilities, time frames, and allocated resources. This plan is to be updated at least every two years. And very important, if conversion of natural ecosystem has been identified as a risk, on the risk assessments on 1.2.3, then it should be addressed as a matter of priority on this indicator. From the point of view of the implementation leaded from this identification on 1.2.3, this plan to be clear on the mechanism to measure the implementation on based on social risk, who will make this uh, engagement for this uh, identification from principles two to four how they will be they will do it what they will do it when they will do it of course to consider the integrated pest and disease plan the agrochemicals management plan for the out the, the supply base the agronomic management plans in the supply base the health and safety plan the management of plan of hcvs outside the unit of certification a waste management plan stakeholders management plan continuous improvement mechanisms so at least to implement the operational controls, to review operational, to evaluate new challenges, to establish and implement operational controls. So it's a plan to be clear that that risk identified will be managed and controlled uh, in, the, in the medium and long term. From the point of view of the auditing, this plan needs to be updated at most 36 months ago is linked to the opportunity assessment in the indicator 1.2.3, of course, uh, to define the series of actions, uh, to identify if there is natural ecosystems risk and what are the actions to prevent that risk, to prioritize the opportunity to demonstrate how the plan aims to reducing the environmental and social gaps, of course, in these indicators in principle two to four, and to regularly review of progress system to learn from the implementation of the plan. To, to be clear that there is a feedback on that implementation. Again, the important the importance is not to be sure that these uh, uh, principles two to four are implemented and, and they are certified. No, the idea for the auditor is to be clear that the risks are assessed and the risks are managed. This is the idea behind this auditing on this indicator. Now we pass to the third criterion the implementation of the sustainability system is systematically and risk-based. The first indicator of this criteria, 
the operator has a system in place to promote compliance with the all applicable local, national, and ratified international laws and regulations. This is a core indicator for meal and agriculture in the unit of certification. And two, it's important that the operator has a documented management system in place to identify, track, and promote compliance with all applicable law, national, and ratified international laws and regulations. We will see after how this system works. So very important that point, if the bone sucrose standard and national law conflict, the operator shall seek ways to honor the principle of the bone sucrose production standard wherever possible. Where the domestic context renders it impossible to meet this responsibility fully, operators shall respect the principle of the bone sucrose production standard to the greatest extent possible in the circumstances and shall demonstrate their efforts in this regard without contravening law, regulation, or even court decisions. So, important in this point of view, a uh, Monsuco production standard uh, needs a system to promote compliance with the law. If there is not possible, uh, the, the, or circumstances don't allow that, so the operator needs to be clear that have the greatest extent possible in the circumstances they have. From the implementation point of view, uh, a system or matrix which identifies, updates, tracks, and verifies compliance, compliance of these applicable laws need to be in place. So, uh, an identification of the laws, an update of the laws, what's the procedure to update the laws, and of course, how to verify this compliance. The person in charge should be aware of the importance of ensuring promoting and facilitating compliance. And of course, compliance can be on waste, pollution, and environmental, all in the environmental protection, in natural conservation and natural ecosystem, water quality extraction and disposal, energy and GSG, labor condition, health and safety, uh, mainly on these uh, aspects. Uh, to analyze, the standards shall prevail in some cases, as we said. Um, periodic due diligence for contracted third parties is very important to be aware that these third parties are in compliance. Unrelevant permits allowing destruction of surface or groundwater, and of course, permits of operation are very important also in this uh, compliance, legal compliance. So, legal compliance is really the basis of sustainability process. It varies from country to country, but it provides insights into how environmental, labor, and occupational health and safety risks are managed. Auditors should be aware of the legislation in each country with regards to the bone sucre production standard, and the standards is not the law. It is a voluntary compliance scheme. Okay. From the auditing point of view, the auditor needs to check uh, the system and the evidence of legal uh, implementation, but also, of course, the system uh, of legal implementation. The compliance program to interview some employees and external third parties to revise that list of uh, legal requirements to be sure how this company update that legal requirements. And of course, that to be sure that they are aware of this implementation and how they do it. Of course, also the auditor, uh, we understand that requirements and we'll be sure that they are implemented on the ground. The second indicator of this criterion is the operator respect can deliver contract terms. Payments shall be made accordingly to contractual agreement, including value and timing of payment. So to respect that, that agreement, this is a core indicator, of course. From the implementation, of course, the operator should ensure farmers understands and agrees with the terms of their contracts. The contract should be in line with local legislation. The operator makes payment for cane deliveries on time and according to agreed contracts to provide farms with a summary of deliveries and payment made in the level of payment and make the methodology and the detailed calculation available for to farmers if requested. So the contracts need to be clear and to be understood by uh, all, all, all the farmers and the company to be sure that they understand all the uh, aspects of this contract. 
So from the auditing point of view, uh, the auditor will see that contract agreements to be sure that the value is correct and the timing is correct, to review that contract agreements, and of course, uh, he can contact one of these farmers to check with them if the payments are correct, the timing is correct, the agreement is correct, and if they understand that agreements. Finally, the last criterion of this principle is systems for monitoring and evaluating money and grievance are implemented. Closing uh, this continuous improvement, this indicator on the fourth criteria of this principle, talk about the operator ensures that internal monitoring processes are conducted, corrective actions implemented, and management review conducted. So in this case, this is a core indicator, and the operators shall perform evaluation on meeting their plans, objectives, and targets, check compliance with applicable legal and other requirements to promote continuous improvement, and maintain the internal monitoring records and reports. From the implementation point of view, the operator should have a mechanism to regular measure the implementation through, of course, maybe a gap analysis to monitor the process that are conducted, to raise, raise corrective actions that are implemented, and to be sure that the management review is done in the better way. The important point of the management review, the aim is to ensure that the organization has all the resources to close the gaps improve the system and ensure compliance with the standard. Inputs to the management uh, review can be internal audits, external audits, compliance from customers, suppliers, or stakeholders. This management review input system should be robust and free from conflict of interest, of course. This is an important part of sustainability and continuous improvement. So the auditor, to audit this indicator, need to be clear that there is a mechanism to monitor the process that can be maybe internal audits, but it can be also other mechanisms to monitor the, the, the process. Uh, documents about the internal audit, tracking of the NCs, of course, evidence of knowledge, uh, who is the person who make that analysis, that uh, gap analysis or internal audit, feedback meetings for the NCs uh, identified, uh, Root causes to identify that NCs, interviews, legal requirements and other requirements, worker participation in the monitoring, action following comments, and the reporting system to management to be sure that the uh, management review is done. Last indicator of this principle is 1.4.2. The operator ensures that there is a mechanism to raise grievance. This is a core indicator from eat meal and agriculture. These mechanisms need to be aligned with the, uh, of course, human rights, UNDP. Uh, the operator resolve this dispute in an effective, timely, and appropriate manner. So they need to be time, time to answer for this uh, grievance. Ensuring anonymity is important to be, to ensure that there is anonymous of compliance when requested with a risk of reprisal or intimidation. It's important to be clear that the process procedures are in place to ensure that the system is understood by the affected parties, including by illiterate parties, and that the operator keeps parties to a grievance informed of its progress, including against a good time frame, and the outcome is available and communicated to relevant stakeholders. So, of course, this, this, this communication and this engagement uh, with these uh, relevant stakeholders. The conflict resolution mechanism shall include the option of access to independent legal and technical advice, the ability for compliance to choose individuals or groups to support them and or act as observers, as well as the option of a third party as a mediator. So they, they can have the access to a uh, uh, independent legal and technical advice, and the company need to allow, if needed, this advice. From the implementation point of view, this indicator aims at ensuring that stakeholders feel free 
to raise complaints and that their grievance will be objectively addressed. So that operators should have grievance mechanisms, ensure anonymity, have an effective communicated. The operators keep parties to a grievance in form of its progress time frame and outcomes. The system allows for complainants to choose individuals or groups to support them and or act as observers. And of course, the operators should have the continuous improvement measure, the personal in charge, the publisher grievance log, the policy mechanisms linked to the complaints, and for sure, a procedure to be clear that this mechanism is implemented. Some considerations to take in account, the communication mechanisms and engagement uh, need to be, of course, accorded with the uh, stakeholders. Link it to the mapping of stakeholders to be sure that all the stakeholders that are mapped understand the mechanisms. Uh, to verify the documents, to keep records, of course, of this, uh, and to be clear that uh, the, the judicial mechanisms to allow them to to access is included on this on this procedure. So an, an effective grievance mechanism is a key point for the implementation of the sustainability uh, and to manage the impacts and social impacts with the stakeholders and the communication with the stakeholders. So effective grievance mechanisms to resolve disputes over the human rights impact of an organization decisions play an important role to protect human rights. Discharging its responsibility to respect human rights, an organization should establish a mechanism for those who believe their human rights have been abused to bring this to the attention of the organization and seek redress. This mechanism should not prejudice access to available legal channels. And of course, the guiding principles state that the operational level grievance mechanism should be legitimate, accessible, predictable, equitable, transparent, rights compatible, based on dialogue and engagement and a source of continuous learning for all. This is, a, again, a key point for the uh, implementation of the sustainability and it's a key point for uh, communication with stakeholders. In preparation for the audit, so before the audit, the audit should ask claims, information and procedure of the mechanism, collecting the evidence uh, he need to be sure if there is a person designated uh, to manage this mechanism. If the mechanism is communicated with stakeholders, if he's in satisfaction with UNGP criteria in terms of time frame and uh, opportunity of the system, is there a, is there is a procedure uh, to implement this mechanism? If there is a list of ongoing and past grievances to to evaluate them, what are what well, which of them are open and which of them are closed. And if is it validated with stakeholders, uh, it means that if calling those stakeholders, they can validate that the system works and they have uh, trust on this system. We arrived to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Please, if you have questions, please, go to the Q&A sessions and or contact standards at bonsucro.com. Thank you so much.